time for final thoughts. And surprise, surprise, leftist crybabies and mainstream media hacks are still hot and bothered by what President Trump may or may not have called Haiti and some African nations. That's what the left and the leftist mainstream media have become, selective outrage machines who dedicate all of their energy and airtime to analyzing presidential adjectives. Wow. Even if he did say it, which we still don't know, this outrage is phony. Lefties, you can't have it both ways. You can't claim we need to let everyone in to protect them from terrible conditions in their home countries, then turn around and tell us we're coming from great and stable places. Sorry, pick one. Let's be honest, this uproar has nothing to do with what President Trump said. Democrats would rather have a fierce debate over President Trump's mean words than solve the immigration problem. It's all a diversion so they don't have to actually do anything. These leftist pearl clutchers are so upset the president may have referred to some countries with a mean adjective. Meanwhile, they spent the last two years plus telling us the United States is a crappy and oppressive country not worth standing for. Please, get over yourselves. You're suddenly offended by dirty language when you've been parading around with F. Trump shirt signs and chants? The hypocrisy is astounding, and Hollywood liberals are the worst offenders. You sit at your award shows, layers of security all around, and gowns that cost more than most people's cars, and preach to the rest of us how we should be more tolerant and welcoming of illegal immigrants? You'll pitch a fit if your lattes aren't quite right. Half of you are nasty to the crews, the makeup artists, the support staff, all people deemed beneath you because you make millions reciting lines or singing a song. I have an idea. How about we pitch a giant tent city in the middle of Beverly Hills? The Hollywood crowd is all upset at the president's possible use of the word asshole, but what if they actually had to look at one in their own backyard? I'd like to see the look on those self-righteous faces when they stroll by Starbucks with their little Yorkies and stumbled upon that. The word might not offend you so much. There's absolutely nothing wrong with establishing and enforcing a merit-based immigration system, which is what the president supports. That's a lot better policy than the democratic practice of opening the floodgates to every Tom, Dick, and Harry. But right, by all means, keep crying over a word. After all, it's about all you guys know how to do anymore. Those are my final thoughts from L.A. God bless and take care. Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase, Dr. King said more than 50 years ago. It's beautiful. President Trump showed good faith last week in that bipartisan meeting where he allowed the cameras in for almost an hour as they discussed DACA and immigration. And although he didn't see the entire staircase leading to the final agreement, he told Democrats and Republicans, all of them that were present, what he needed to get to yes. He needed an end to chain migration and the wall in exchange for a path to legalization for those 800,000 illegal immigrants. Two days later, the Democrats, acting in bad faith along with Lindsey Graham, presented him a deal that they knew he couldn't accept. It increased chain migration and did not sufficiently fund the wall. A total non-starter. So after the president nixed it, Senator Durbin rushed out to mis mis mischaracterize off-color remarks about the corruption in the third world that drives citizens of those countries away into the United States. Well, that set off a firestorm. Everyone from Al Sharpton to LeBron James weighed in, declaring Trump toxic on the issue of race. And then despicable columns like this further poison the well. Yeah, I love that nuance by Charles Blow. Members of the Congressional Black Caucus predictably are piling on. Uh, I've called him a racist, deplorable, despicable, uh, added to what others are calling him, a moron, ignorant, on and on and on. Do you think President Trump is a racist? I think he is a racist. Now... If I were a conspiracy theorist and watching how this whole thing is played out, I'd almost want to say the entire thing was a setup. Let's talk about what's really going on here. The Democrats cannot afford for Trump to be successful, particularly among African Americans. Unemployment among African Americans was 7.9% in 2016. Last month, it was down over a point to 6.8%. That's a record. Weekly earnings for African Americans up nearly 2%. Home ownership among African Americans has ticked up to 42%. Given the success of Trump's policies for black America and the left's tragic record, they've decided to demonize the president as a racist. It's all they have. Disturbin Durbin went so far as to claim that the president was racist for using the term chain migration. 
When it came to the issue of, quote, chain migration, I said to the president, do you realize how painful that term is to so many people? African Americans believe that they migrated to America in chains. And when you speak about chain migration, it hurts them personally. Well, then we found this. The DREAM Act would not allow what is known as chain migration. In fact, DREAM Act students would have very little, limited ability to sponsor their family members. For yeah, it's when Trump uses it, it's racist. When he uses it, it's just descriptive. And incidentally, Lindsey Graham, who supposedly upbraided the president for calling certain countries s-holes, had no trouble using his own tough language when referring to certain countries. The people coming across the southern border live in hell holes. They don't like that. They want to come here. Our problem is we can't have everybody in the world who lives in a hellhole come into America. Oh, how rude. So are Graham and Durbin racist? If we apply the same logic they want us to apply to Trump, well, I guess they are. That's ridiculous, of course. The left is now circling the wagons on this. And now we learn that John Lewis, Maxine Waters, Frederica Wilson, remember with the cowboy hat? Uh, and a few others are boycott boycotting the State of the Union. Now, you got to be kidding me. They should all be attending to thank the president for all he's doing to better the lives of African Americans. On my radio show today, author and Hoover Institution fellow Shelby Steele had these choice words for Congressman Lewis. John Lewis is, is um, can't, lacks the imagination. Um, and has been so well rewarded for his his history of protest that he just keeps beating that drum. He keeps trying to protest, thinking that that's what's uh, going to get us ahead. It's not. Protest is over for Black Americans. We have to we have to rely on the individual developing their skills, their talents, competing in the world. Now, if the congressional Democrats and celebs in the fields of entertainment and sports. If they really wanted to help struggling minorities, they would work with, not against, President Trump to continue to expand economic and educational opportunities like school choice for all people. But thankfully, I was actually heartened by this. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee has not announced plans that she'll join the no-shows at the State of the Union. Now, let's be real. It would take a nuclear holocaust for her to give up that camera-ready real estate she always occupies on the aisle. Is she already there, camped out? She has to come on the show. I like to think she's fun. I like her. As usual, regular working people tend to have a better handle on the truth than the swamp dwellers here in Washington. I want you to listen to a few of my callers from my show today. We are doing much better under President Trump than we did when we counted on uh, our own person, so to speak, uh, President Ob Obama. He did very little directly to help our community. We thought when we elected him, he would indeed do what Donald Trump is doing, make America great. Instead, he divided America. Trump is not a racist guy. You know, Trump is trying to get equality for Americans. You know, and, and somehow everybody's thinking, oh, he's so righteous. Oh, it's, it's, it's a racist comment. And, and he's not. He just wants what's best for Americans, black, white, or other. That's why I love radio. I hear from real people every day. It's, it's my own focus group, ongoing. It's pretty obvious why the Democrats have themselves so worked up into this racial frenzy. They are petrified of a Republican president who actually delivers tangible economic results for black and Hispanic Americans. Democrats are racial monopolists, and they're not about to allow President Trump to break their stranglehold on the black and Hispanic voters without a really nasty fight, which is what you're seeing right now. Now, check this out. The Atlantic is reporting that the president's support among African Americans is up. That's the Atlantic magazine. It's not a conservative think tank. In fact, by the way, that support among African Americans has nearly doubled. When he was elected back in 2016, only 13 percent of black men supported Trump. Now, according to a new survey of more than 600,000 people, Trump's support among African-American men is up to 23 percent. He's also gone up somewhat with black women from 4 percent, that's a pathetic number, in 2016, to now, a little bit better, 11 percent in this latest poll. 
I'm telling you this. As the financial benefits of Trump's policies touch the pocketbooks and the neighborhoods of the black community, the old Democratic charges and hysteria will look more and more unhinged. Now, is this really what Dr. King dreamed about? Faith, freedom, and equal opportunity were at the heart of Dr. King's vision for his fellow Americans and fellow black Americans. And today, who's closer to helping more of our citizens realize that vision? President Trump, who in a year has already shown incredible results? Or Democrats, who when they're out of power and out of ideas, simply call their opponents racists? I think you know the answer. And that's The Angle. Thank <laughs> you.